Hey guys, Danny Johnson here, and today we're working on my twin brother's car. It looks just like mine, but it's not. And uh, today we're going to be doing uh, the caster camber plates, uh, as well as some new uh, struts. And uh, just a little bit about the car. It's an 04 Mach 1. Mine's an 03, so that's how you can tell right there, that 40th badge on the side. He's got a really nice pair of these brand new AFS 17 by 10 and a half. Love those wheels. And uh, anyway, so we're going to go ahead and get started. So the question would be, why would we install this? And the answer is when you lower a car, it changes the geometry of the suspension. As you're looking at that wheel, it may look a little cockeyed. And uh, some, of it, some of it is normal uh, camber that uh, the car is set with from the factory. But regardless, once you start lowering it, it changes all that. So we're actually going to be adding these plates right here on the strut tower. And they are adjustable, so you're able to move them around and get a very proper alignment on the car. Okay, so we've lifted the car and put it in the air. We have jack stands on each side. And we're going to have those go on to the subframe connectors there. They are a little far back, but we'll be all right. And uh, we just lifted with the jack right on the K member so we could do it both at the same time. can save you a little time, but just make sure you don't hit your oil pan when lifting that way. While the car's still on the ground, go ahead and take your socket. In this case, it's a 19 millimeter, but these are aftermarket studs, I believe or at least uh, nuts. So go ahead and break all of these loose, just a half or a full rotation, um, just so that they're loose and when you lift the car off the ground, the wheel won't spin. Look at these brand new tires. <laughs> all right. <laughs> So when breaking this top bolt loose on the very center, the problem is the whole strut will spin. So there's a notch in the top of it, and what you can do is get a screwdriver and lock it in place, and then it's uh, 21 millimeter is basically the size on this. If you don't have that, you could try to find a big wrench like this. However, we're going to go with a different approach since we have an impact. We're just going to go ahead and put our 21 millimeter on there, and as you hit it with an impact, it spins fast enough that the strut usually just stays in place. So next we're going to position the jack under the control arm to support it, and then we're going to go ahead and take off the top strut bolt. So the key to this is to do small jolts. There you go. And it'll come right out. Okay, so now we're going to go in and follow the strut here down. And you'll see that there's a bracket bolt that's a 24 millimeter. Once we take that off and remove the, the bracket, then we can take the other nuts off that are actually holding the strut to the whole wheel hub assembly. Go ahead and move that bracket out of the way. Next, we're going to take our quarter inch wrench and we're going after this ABS sensor. So as you turn that little guy, we'll, as soon as the, uh, the bolt is out, you'll be able just to pull that sensor away from uh, the wheel hub. Okay, so go ahead and pull that bolt out and then the ABS sensor itself be able to wiggle right out. It's just a magnet. So uh, you can also clean it off at this point, get all the little metal shavings that it's collected off. So now grab a breaker bar and put a 21 millimeter socket on one side of the bolt and then on the other we're doing our 24 millimeter and uh, you have to do it this way to hold it still or it'll just spin. And you can you can lift and lower the jack in order to get that. There we go. So it lifted the jack just slightly, and you're able to slide those right out. So now we're just going down to the bottom bolt. 24 on this side, 21 on this side, 
and just the way it worked out with clearance we're putting the impact on the other side but same thing all right so there's the nut out on that side and remember as you're pulling that bolt out if it's giving you trouble just lift or lower the jack but we have both of these out now and they are the same size so now we went ahead and just dropped that strut out and when they're old enough you can even compress them by hand if you have to. Now repeat the same process on the other side to get the other strut out for the passenger side. Now you can go ahead and run some zip ties just around some of the other suspension parts just so that you have, uh, you know, you're not hanging anything on the brake lines because you don't want them to to break or have any problems. All right, next we're going after these three 15 millimeter bolts and we're gonna take off the stock tower brace brush. So make sure that from the bottom you're supporting the bottom bracket as you get that last bolt out. So go ahead and lower that out. So next we're going to have to drill these rivets out in order to remove that plate. All right, go ahead and start drilling these out. So we're using a 11 64th inch bit on this, but once those are out, you can remove that plate. All right, so now what you're gonna do is take your factory bracket, you're gonna rotate it 180 degrees, and you're gonna line up your holes on these factory slots on first the inner side right here. So we're lined up on the inner side here, and over here, we're gonna line that up so it's also on the inner side there and then you're going to take a sharpie and draw a nice circle right on that uh, outside of that now you're going to shift this downward towards the other end of this oval circle that's the factory circle so now we're on this outer edge here and on this hole over here you're also on that outer edge so we're going to go ahead and draw another circle in there Now as you remove this, right between those two circles is where we're going to punch and drill our next hole. So to double check our work, we took the plate that's going to be coming up from underneath the car. We took our digital caliper and we set this right in the center of each of these studs. Now we moved this over to where it's going to go on the car and we lined it up to the very center of this hole and our new mark that we've created and it's pretty close there so uh, as we drill between these two holes we will probably come over this way just a hair towards the outside. Put a punch right where you decided you were gonna hit it and make a nice mark And that's where we're going to put our drill bit. We'll start with a smaller bit and start our drilling and then move to a bigger bit. The last one was at 13 sixteenths, so now we're stepping up to a 13 64.
fingers to uh, drill all the way through and now we're just stepping each bit up size by size. 13 30 seconds is the final size that it says to use. So you get a file and just smooth everything out. So then uh, after you've drilled that out with that uh, 13 30 seconds, test everything that you can get these all the way up in there. And uh, you may still have some fine tuning to do, but it uh, looks like we're on the right track here. Okay, so here's our factory strut. I'm going to show you what pieces you keep and which ones you transfer over when switching to the Maximum Motorsports one. This is a new strut we're installing, um, so it's really no different than this one. Uh, this is the Maximum Motorsport uh, bump stop. So starting from the top, this was the first nut that we took off. And so that is something you will reuse. In our case, we'll have new hardware with the new strut, but that would be a piece you reuse. This next piece, and this one right here, you are going to discard. We're not using that anymore. Uh, this was the factory piece that we used as a template. We're not using that anymore. Uh, this is another piece that came up from the bottom of the strut tower. We're not using that anymore. This is the dust shield. We will use a piece of this. Uh, and then this was the uh, factory bump stop, which we're no longer using either. So uh, we'll set that aside too since we have a new strut. And now what we have to do is take off this band and remove this piece right here. Okay, so we're going to remove this band here. We're going to take a little screwdriver, just place it in here. And as you twist it, you should be able to loosen it up just enough to get it off. And uh, so we're just basically just bending it. The Maximum Motorsports kit comes with a uh, zip tie that we'll be using in, it, in its place. So you just want to slide it off and get it out of the way. And then twist off this factory piece here. Okay, and then just pry that piece out like that. Now you're going to take the new bump stop, and this is a little bit difficult to get this down in here. It's a pretty tight fit, so if you can get a screwdriver in here and gently pry up on it, you may even take two screwdrivers, and you just have to go around. It's like putting on a bike tire. <laughs> okay, and so right here we're installing the zip tie that it comes with. As you can see, this sits in here flush. We got that in there good. So now we're just taking our zip tie, tightening this up as tight as you can get it. Grab a pair of pliers if you want. Okay, get a pair of cutters. Cut off the excess. Now we're going to just slide this over our new strut. Okay, now we're all assembled and ready to put this back up into the car. Okay, so you have a bunch of hardware here. We're going to show you where it all goes, so make sure you pay attention. We're going to start here with this plate. So this is the driver's side plate. It has the notch in the front, and it's flat here, rounded towards the back. Make sure you get these right. They're side specific. Now, as you're going to put this up, you're going to want to grab these four thick, big washers. Okay. We're going to go ahead and from inside the fender, we're reaching up in here. Okay, so go ahead and lift those up so it's flush. Now this is where these big washers go on. You're going to put the flat bottom part of them touching the, the strut tower. Okay. Next you're going to grab your plate here. Side specific again, you have this 
front corner piece pointing forward, okay? And you're just gonna slide it right on top of here. You got that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now that's in place. We're gonna grab all these washers and some of the nuts. Okay, so you have the Maxima Motorsports portion here that's gonna be facing forward. So first you'll put washers down for each of these. And then you'll slide this right over the top. And put washers down again. I'm just going to get them kind of snug for now. You want everything to be able to be adjusted and moved around, so just kind of mocking it all up basically. Okay, so now that we have that all mocked up, this is the important part. Let me show you the diagram here. Whether your car is lowered or standard height. Okay, this is the piece that we just put on. So now that we're looking at the actual strut here, There's a certain way of putting these spacers on. Our car is down here, has been lowered. So we want to put on our short spacer first, which would be on the, this side of the strut. Okay. Then we're left with two big spacers and one small spacer. We'll set those over here for now. And next we're going to lift the strut up in. Okay, so once you get the uh, strut pushed up through here, uh, down here what we did is we just ran one bolt inside just to hold it in place. We don't have anything tightened down, but that way the brake lines aren't hanging. Now let's refer again to our diagram here. Our car is lowered, so now we have a short spacer to go down and two long spacers. If you had a non-lowered car, it would have been a different setup. Two long spacers, a short spacer, and only one short spacer up on top of that. So at any rate, right now we're looking for a short spacer to go first, then the two long. So yeah, so that drove it down just enough to use another big washer. So we're going to start tightening that. We're also compressing the suspension a little bit with a jack to help with this. So once that's on tight again, we're backing this off and we're going to use a combination now of the big washer or spacer and another smaller spacer and start over again and use that to push this down and bring that strut higher up. Okay, so once that's tight again to the point where it won't go anymore, now we're going to see if we can switch out our little spacer for the big one. Get on here again. Start tightening this down. And now we're pretty much tight to the point where we're going to be where we want to be. But we want to have the, according to the, I don't think it really matters, but according to the diagram, you need the short spacer on first, then these two. And now we're coming to the home stretch here. All we have to do is tighten this. And uh, we're going to do so with an impact short bursts to get this uh, to come up. And just when the top of the, the uh, strut stud is sticking out a few threads, we're pretty much done. Okay, so once we have this on here pretty well, we're going to put our impact gun. Short burst to tighten it. Our 
still have a little ways to go there. There we go. So we have uh, quite a few threads sticking through there, so we're pretty tight. I'm just going to make sure it's pretty even on both sides. So now we're just snugging down every one of these uh, nuts and uh, just kind of getting them pretty good and tight, but we're going to have to take the car in and definitely take it to someone who knows what they're doing and get the car in good alignment. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and install and tighten both of these bolts here. You got the 24 millimeter on one side and 21 on the other. So we're going to go ahead and tighten them down. Okay, so once you have those tight, we'll torque them down here in a minute. Okay, so we're going to reinstall our ABS sensor. Make sure that that tip is clean. We cleaned it off pretty good. And it just goes down back into here. We got our quarter inch little uh, bolt here. We're tightening back up. Quarter inch wrench, we just finished tightening that ABS sensor. Uh, now we have our bracket to reinstall here. And it just goes over these two. And we have our 24 millimeter nut here that goes on the very end to keep the bracket on. It's really just the same as the way we took it off. We can go ahead and tighten that. Okay. That's nice and snug. Make sure that this is all correct here. Has a little clip that that sits in. Okay, so we're ready to put the wheels back on the car. Once again, we did double check that these were nice and tight, everything that we had taken off. Okay, so we're just putting the lug nuts back on. We torque these down to about 90 to anywhere from 90 to 100 foot pounds. Okay, you just want to use the star pattern as you cross over. Now that that's on pretty tight, we're going to drop the car down, and as soon as it's barely touching the ground and it has some friction on it, then we'll torque them down with our torque wrench. Okay, so we're just torquing these down to. 95 to 100 foot pounds, and we got them pretty close with that impact. So just make sure you do the star pattern on that, and just go around and do all of them. So you want to be very careful now that these are protruding up so much. The car does have indentations that should cover this just fine, but uh, just to make sure it was all installed correctly and everything, close the hood slowly. Just make sure that uh, there we go. Make sure you're not hitting on that thing. And uh, looks like we're pretty clear. They've even talked about putting some play-doh on here. <laughs> yeah, just a putty, just as a way to close it and see if it's making contact. Anyway, now you're ready to go take it for a good alignment.